Hey guys, welcome to 3D Studio Max 2016 and today I'm going to show you guys how to do Super Spray and what some of the uses that you can do with Super Spray and I'm going to walk you guys through a basic tutorial of how to create a water fountain using the Super Spray. Alright, so here we are in 3D Studio Max. I'm going to go into our perspective view here and I'm going to grab a cylinder. I'm going to click and drag out a cylinder and drag up just like that. Now if you don't see your uh, faces here, you can go to realistic and go to edge faces and you can see your edge faces here so that way you can see them there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this to the center of our universe here and the way we do that is we select the move tool and then go down to X, Y, and Z and right click on these arrows here that way it'll be centered here as you can see in our top front left and uh, perspective views here. We're going to go to our modify tab and you can call this fountain if you'd like and uh, what we're going to do, the size does not matter but I'll just make it 50, uh, 60 right now and the height will be 10 okay um, the segments here, the height segments do not matter so we're going to leave that to zero to 1 and the side segments just to let you guys know is if you want to make it different shapes and, and whatnot the more sides you have the more uh, rounder it will look so I will just for now I'm just going to leave it at 30 we're making a simple uh, shape here now I'm going to increase this size by maximizing my view over here in my perspective view and you should be able to see that now a lot larger. And there's two methods to make this thing an edible poly so we can edit the features of this. You can right click this and go down to convert to edible poly but once you do that you will not be able to go back to editing the size of this so I do not recommend this. This is no good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the modify drop down tab and I'm going to scroll down here and you're going to see right here where it says edit poly. This is the one you want to choose. This way you can always go back to the cylinder and adjust the radius and settings if should you want to or turn it on or off. So we're going to go into edit poly. I'm going to select this polygon mode right here under the selection. I'm going to select the surface of this polygon right now and what I'm going to do is if I scroll down just a little bit you'll see right here where it says inset and extrude. These are the two features that we're going to use today to create our fountain. If I hit inset and I click and drag on the inside of this, you'll see that the insides come in just like that. And another method to do this is to go use the settings tab, which is right next to the inset. I can click that and it'll bring a dialog box. And you can see that if I drag this out, it'll do the same effect, just like that. So we'll just choose 10. Again, it does not matter the numbers. This is just for demonstration purposes. Once you like this, you're going to hit check, check, and close it out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extrude and we're going to extrude it downwards. We don't want to go too far, but we want to go just enough like that. And then I'm going to inset this one more time and bring it in until about there. And then I'm going to extrude this section upwards just like that. So once we're happy with everything, we can, we can uh, check off that and you can see that we have this shape that's like this. Okay. What we are then going to do is we are going to create the super spray effect. So you got to go to the create tab under standard primitives drop down box you're going to see this thing called particle system. Under particle system you can see a, a selection here of spray, PF source, snow, blizzard, pea clouds and whatnot. We're going to select super spray here and we're going to just click and drag out anywhere on the screen here. Now what you'll notice here is on the screen the particles emit from the center of this object. They do not emit from the top of it. It's just showing the direction of travel that they're doing. That's all it is. So if I scrub in my timeline to frame 15, you'll see the particles start to come out. Now uh, what I'm going to do is move that system right to the center here. And the way I do that is I'm going to right click, right click, and right click the bottom of my screen here so that way I know it's there. And I'm going to bring this up just a little bit so I know that it's just coming out of the top here like that. Alright, so now let's talk about the super spray and how this all works. I'm going to go to the modify tab and under the super spray you're going to see some basic settings here. Off axis is set to zero and what this does is it basically tells us which direction we want to face our super spray, which direction is our, our particles going to come out of. I'm going to leave it at zero right now because that's where I want to have it come out of. Our spread is like a fan. It lets us know how, you know, which is it 180 degrees in all directions or is it just fanning out in you know one way? Well, I'm going to leave this out to let's say like 25 just to give it an effect there. Our off plane again is just a rotation of the thing as you can see there. Then uh, what I'm going to do for the spread, I'm going to leave this to 180 degrees so it comes out in all directions. Now you'll also see the display icon underneath here and what that does is it 
lets us know how big our selection is. We can leave it small, we can leave it big, it just sort of lets us be able to click on the particle system should we not be able to reach it. The thing you'll see here is a viewport display. There's ticks, there's dots, there's mesh. And we're going to get into a little bit of all three of those. If I go to dots, you'll see that they get a little bit smaller. Ticks is a little bit easier to see. And then mesh, you'll see that they actually show as little triangles here, but they're very small. And I'll show you how to increase that in a second. What we're going to do here is percentage of particles. This is showing the percentage of particles viewable on the screen right now in our perspective view. So if I increase that to say 50, you'll see more particles start to show on the screen here. But when you render this out, they will all show on the screen. So just be aware that this is only for the viewport display in our viewport showing that. So I'm going to leave it as ticks, and uh, that way you can see the particles there. I can crank it up to 100, but remember, when you have this at full resolution, it's going to really be intensive on your graphics card, and when they're moving, it's going to be very taxing on your uh, computer. So try to keep these numbers low just so you can see what the effect is, and then when you're ready, then you can crank it up later on if you so desire. Underneath this particle generation you'll see here, if we click on that, you can see the use rate. This is how fast they're coming out. They're coming out at 10 at a time out of the center of the particles here. They're coming 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, etc. The speed is set to 10, uh, and you can adjust that. So this is going pretty quickly right now, and we might have to slow that down to create a desired effect, depending on what we're going for. Uh, variation lets us know, are some particles small, or some of them, I mean, particles fast or slow, some of them coming out really quick, some of them are coming out really slow, and you can change that up to whatever you'd like. Particle timing, this is important guys, okay, so particle timing lets us know when our particles come out of our scene. Right now, the emit start is at start at frame zero, so if I go to frame zero, this is where our particles are starting. They're starting here, and they're coming out, and they're going all the way to what? Frame 30, they're going to stop there, so if I go to frame 30, uh, the particles sh should stop here, but they continue on. So notice they continue on. They continue on for the fact that there is right here a life of the particles, so 30 frames. So from frame 30, they stop emitting, and then they continue on for 30 more frames before they die off. And so frame 60 should be my last particle system right here. So they're going to go to frame 60, and that's where the last one should be there. Boom. Look at it. They're all disappeared. See? So the life of the particle is at frame 30 and we're going to have to adjust that a little bit later on and you'll see why. The display unit lets us know how long the display is going to be there for uh, on the particle. So if I go to frame 100, you'll see that if I move this here to frame 100, though, it's going to keep showing all the way to frame 100 and they'll still be there. Even if I zoom out, they'll still be there to frame 100. So I'm going to leave this right now at frame 30 and uh, bring this back out so you can see this zoom in a little bit alright so the next thing what we're gonna do is uh, you can have cre uh, the creation time the emitter translation emitter rotations if things are gonna be rotating things like that we want to talk about particle size so you can adjust the size of your particles the variations of the size you can tell it to grow from small to large or from large to small and at what the gradation the fade for um, the particle death would be is it gonna be slower or is it gonna be longer and that all takes place when we have the mesh dot the mesh uh, on there and I'll show you that if I turn this on I will turn the mesh on so that way you can see the particles they're small so we're gonna have to go down here and we're gonna have to change the particle size a little larger so let's increase that so you can physically see those Dorito chips floating around there now I'll leave that size 10 so that way you can see it and you'll see as I come through here it'll it'll show and they're coming out in all different directions and let's take a look at the different particle types we have here so underneath the particle type if we click under that you will see standard particles, you can see triangles, we can change it to cubes, we can change it to facing, uh, which lets us know that these faces will always face the camera's viewport. Special, uh, constant, six-sided po uh, points, spheres, um, and tetras. For this effect, you also see here that they also have metaparticles, and metaparticles are particles that are like little cubes that basically, um, when they're, they're orbs when they grow in size they will gel together and you can do a lot of great effects with this but be aware when you have this on and they're very large in size it's very very taxing on your computer and it will take a long time to render so be aware of this if you have a good computer 
um, that will slow down your computer and or crash 3D Studio Max program. So take it very lightly when you get into matter particles and start experimenting and go slow with it before that does happen and you lose all your stuff. Remember to save your work, so you want to make sure you save up top. And to get this effect for the meta particles, it's a great example online for those of you who have ever played the video game called Portal. There's a sequel to it called Portal 2, and I have an example here that shows you how they use the meta particles in that game. I'm going to queue that up right now so you can take a look at that. And this way you can see exactly how they use that propulsion gel and they created that effect using 3D Studio Max. Take a look. So as you can see, see all this right here? These right here and this is all shooting out. These are all particles being generated by the mesh particle system that is all right here under meta particles and how they congeal together. You can tell how much tension they have between each other, the variations between small and large that are all like this, and then how they animate and congeal with one another when they splat and do their effect just like that. And that is exactly how you do that effect using 3D Studio Max. And I'm going to show you that right now. All right. So I'm going to turn this back onto standard particles for right now. And we're going to leave this as Tetra. And you can see that it looks like a bunch of needles coming out of the... Uh, the super spray here. We're going to change that so if you keep scrolling down you can see rotation and collision tab. If we open that up you'll see here we have the spin time it's telling you it's spinning in the air for 30 frames, the variation of the types of spin, the phase, the different types of phase variations. And then we have the axis. Right now it's in randomly located. We're going to change that to direction of travel and we're going to add motion blur to it so you can see here all of them now face the super spray direction. So now they're all coming out, looks like a bunch of needles going <laughs> pretty cool. All right, so you can stretch them if you want to, so it gives a time warp effect, like you know what I mean? Uh, they use in Star Trek. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that at one, I think is what it was, or was it set to zero, I forget, zero. Or you can change them if you want to later on. Now, uh, if we go down to different objects down here, there's options, motion, bubble motion, particle spawn, load and save presets, should you want to load some other ones that are already there for you. But right now, I'm going to leave this as the arrow is coming out, the tetra is coming out. And what we're going to do is we're going to add another effect to this, so that way the particles come up and then they come back down. And in order to achieve that, you have to add another effect called gravity and gravity is formed underneath here underneath the space warps if i click on space warps you'll see underneath here there's a drop down forces deflectors geometry deformables etc but we're going to deal with the force of gravity which is right here and i'm going to click and drag out like this and you'll see under the modified tab that the gravity here is set to one so how do we attach this to that well we're going to use the space find warp which is here and you can click this and what you're going to do is click this and then you're going to drag it to whatever object you want as a super spray and it'll affect it right away so notice that when I grab this it affects that and the gravity is really high so I'm going to lower the gravity down to say 0.25 um, and you can see that taking effect here and so once I bring this out you'll see the particles come out but they're not lasting long enough so I need to go back to my particle system and go back to the super spray and now we have to play around with the particle timing and make the life last a little longer. Let's try 50 see what that looks like. You can hit play and it'll keep coming just like this and let's see if that's too... let's go a little bit longer. Let's try 60, 60 frames. Alright, let me pause this for a second here and you can see that our particles are actually going beyond this here and we don't want that because the more we have particles we have rendering in the background or underneath our scenes it's going to use more computing power and that's not going to be very good so we want to keep that down to a minimum so what I'm going to do right here is click on this and I'm going to go to our super spray and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow the speed down to say like I don't know let's just go with five or eight and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, emit stop frame 100 so it's all the way through the entire frame and then what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, where is it we're gonna uh, lower our spread of our size of our particles so that they're inside of the um, fountain here so now you can see that they're there now we gotta slower the de we gotta lower the depth here so the depth of the particles is a, is a 60 so we're gonna bring that down just about there 
and you will see the effect that we're trying to create just like that now you'll notice that the particles are a little bit too big so we got to shrink the particle size right here and just shrink them down a little bit so they're not we'll just go size 5 and you'll create the effect of a water fountain using the particle system like this now you're probably wondering how do I surface this how do I texturize that if you go to the material editor here you can always launch that and I'm going to just move this to the side here you can go down and make sure mental ray is on. If you do not see mental ray here, you can go down to go to uh, render, render setup. And when that window pops up, scroll all the way down and you'll see assign render right here. Turn that on and right here is production and then uh, active shade. Make sure you click these three dots here and you're going to choose mental ray and make sure you save them as default. Um, and then you can, you will see all these showing up. If you don't see it, just close out 3D Studio Max, relaunch it, and you'll see them now populate here. And it's very cool because they have a lot of different presets that are available to you. You can choose a water effect, and then you can take this effect here, and you can attach this using the drag drop tool, and then it'll attach to that, and it will render out when you hit F9 on your keyboard. It'll give the effect. Right now, you don't see it very well because of the fact that I have a black background on my scene, but that's for you to figure out and you to populate your scene and make a ground plane and then a background plane and uh, get that to going. The next thing I'm going to talk to you guys is about how to create a ripple effect so when the water hits the ground it creates a little ripple effect on the ground there and it makes it look like a water fountain um, effect. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. This is 3D Studio Max 2016 and this is the Super Spray Basics just to get you started and experimenting with all sorts of different varieties you can do. Go animate. Have fun. Bye bye.